Hi everyone, it's Sinead here and in today's video we are returning to Mayfair to the Farm Street Church. In our previous video on Mayfair, which we will link to in the description below, we only briefly peeked inside this church. But today you will receive a guided tour of this wonderful parish church from Father Dominic Robinson, the parish priest of Mayfair. Farm Street Church was founded in the mid-19th century following the Catholic Emancipation Act and has since its founding had a long association with the arts. And on this tour, you will explore the wonderful architecture of the church and see fabulous artworks, including a sculpture of Mother Mary and a 12-foot long canvas depicting the Last Supper and a sculpture depicting Jesus as a homeless man. So I'll just introduce you to Father Dominic. Now, Father Dominic, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. I will just hand you this. So I'm going to give Father Dominic this. If you don't mind holding that, and Father Dominic sure. is going to give us a little bit of information about the church. Thank you very much, Sinead. Welcome to Farm Street Church. It's wonderful to welcome you on your tour of Mayfair to this beautiful and historic church, which also is a very vibrant part of the local community and the London community now. Um, this church was founded in the mid-19th century, so um, Catholics were allowed to worship again in England in 1829, so we have the Catholic Emancipation Act, as it was called. Very soon afterwards, money was raised to build a church which would be staffed by the Jesuits, the religious order of the Catholic Church, the Society of Jesus, um, and we moved in here in the 1840s. Foundation stone was laid in 1843. The church was formally opened in 1849. Throughout the 19th century and for the 20th century too, we've been known very much for being uh, a centre of the community where especially people can come if they're interested in becoming Roman Catholic. So we've had a, a number of famous people who've been received into the Roman Catholic Church here. We've been known for that. We've also been known for the arts very much over the years. Um, we've been a centre for the arts, such as the, uh, the, the, the Catholic Writers Guild, the Catholic Association of Performing Arts. Still today, both of those where we are hosting. Um, but, but also um, Catholic writers, people like Chesterton and Belloc and Evelyn War, these famous Catholic writers in the past. So there's all that history in, in the past. But now today, we're a very vibrant community and all of those things are important. We want to, above all, be a place of welcome, a place of welcome to everyone. So um, especially at a time when um, people have been falling away from the practice of the Christian and the Catholic faith, we're a place of welcome to everyone, wherever you, wherever you, you, you're coming from, from we, our congregation is from all over London, further afield and through the live stream and media it's reaching indeed um, across the world. So um, whatever it is that um, interests you in the Catholic Church, the Christian Church, pop in and, and say hello and say a prayer, see our beautiful art and perhaps also be part of our volunteering community. We do a, an amazing work our volunteers do in the local area in central London with the homeless, with refugees, with people who are the weakest in society. So when you come into Farm Street Church, know above all that you are most welcome and come and say hello and we look forward to meeting you. May God bless you. Father. Thank you most sincerely right. for your time. Father Dominic, that was wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a very busy man and I really appreciate his time. Thank you, Father. We're going to have a little look inside the church. So I'll just show you the stunning, stunning building. Ladies and gents, I can... Um, I could guide this for you, but I'd rather have the expert. And Father Dominic has agreed to show us around just a few of the beautiful exhibits that are here. But just a quick mention about the high altar. That was designed by Augustus Pugin, which you'll all be familiar with, with, of course, uh, we speak about quite a bit in the Houses of Parliament. And he also did St. Mary's Cathedral in Killarney, where I'm from. Remember the tours I showed you in Killarney? So we'll have a little look at that in a minute. I do know the, bar the, um, the cathedral did suffer some damage during World War II, and Adrian Gilbert Scott 
um, was a re responsible for remodelling it, I believe, Father, in 1951. I think so. He was the grandson of Giles Gilbert Scott, who we know as the um, the architect who built St Pancras Cathedral here and the Albert Memorial. It's but um, in St Pancras Station, thank you. <laughs> Cathedral, did I say, Father? I'm, I'm becoming slightly Albert obsessed. Station. Yes. In the center of Oh, very good. So you see, Father has all the interesting information, so I'm going to let him to take okay, over, and I'll just do a little film with him just around the chapel here. So I'll give you that, Father. Thanks, Sinead. We'll, ju we'll just do a, um, a couple of places. As we move up, as we, we'll just talk as we move up the aisle. Um, the, the, we, we make use of all of these side altars um, uh, as shrines. So here we have... Um, uh, a shrine for the Middle East. We do a lot of work with Catholic charities who are connected with the Middle East. And since the refugee crisis started in 2014 in Syria and and Iraq, um, then we've been we've been supporting charities who work with with Christians who are who are persecuted um, on account of their faith. Um, but those of all religions and none as well who are in that dreadful position and of course um, the Afghan refugee situation is something which we're praying for and trying to help with as well now through hosting and through fundraising and through through supporting the work of these charities. So we're very honoured to have the parish priest of Mayfair helping us out on this today to folks. Look at the stunning portrait of the Virgin Mary. I have to say this is my favourite painting in the church but it's probably because it's the most recent. This is by our artist in residence, Andrew White. Oh who is my God! It's a, an beautiful. Anglican um, painter, a man of great faith and of wonderful skill, and uh, it's called Mother Mary. So it's the mother of Jesus. It's the mother of God, um, our Blessed Lady, as we call her in the Roman Catholic tradition. Um, and uh, Andrew did research on the on the clothing. So this is. Mm -hmm. This is as, um, as Mary would have been, we think, in first century Palestine. And it's at the time of the Annunciation, as we call it, when, when Mary uh, said yes to the angel Gabriel to um, the birth of Jesus. Um, it son. looks like a modern version, doesn't it, it does, Father? Doesn't it's it? so beautiful. Yeah. It just kind of makes us more identify with Mary a little bit more, doesn't it? I this think one. it does. Yes, I, I it's really so angelic it and virginal. Yeah. It's just stunningly beautiful that really struck me when yeah. I first came here so this is uh, dedicated to the Blessed Virgin I'm assuming yes and again the Annunciation here so this chapel is um, yes is is all to do with the Annunciation and to do with Mary the church is dedicated to the Blessed Mary, Virgin the, yeah. the Immaculate Conception and we have we have a Jesuit saint here who died of the plague in Rome at a very early age since Stanislas Koska a Polish saint oh. um, and there are there are several of those uh, dedications and yeah in dedications in the in the church oops yeah. <laughs> you see the detail oh, in the ceilings folks I nearly fell over a box there but thank god the father's with me too isn't it stunning I mean just this tiny little quaint church that I found on route in Mayfair so please visit ladies and gents you have to make sure you get a little visit in here the mosaics are out of this world doubting Thomas Oh, doubting Thomas, yeah. of course, and um, that's quite important to us as well. We, um, you know, we, we, as I was saying in the introduction, we want to welcome everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to believe and to behave before you belong here. Um, we want to say welcome um, before church is open to everybody. That's to open wonderful. To everyone, and come and see. You know what we believe. Um, we believe in Jesus Christ. You know. Um, as the way, the truth, and the life, um, and uh, we uh, aim to be a community which is on the side of the weakest and which wants to make a difference in, in society. So, yeah, so open to everyone. Yeah, Tinker, yeah, tailor, soldier, yeah, sailor, as yeah. they used to say in Ireland yeah, years ago. Yeah. And I believe that you have a big um, contingency of the LGBT community as well. So we do have several things, really, um, along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, to welcome people uh, mm -hmm. who might feel on the margins. Obviously, this one uh, is beautiful yeah, and as we well. Can talk about the homeless as well and homeless Jesus. But the L LGBT Catholics Westminster is, it's um, it's uh, an invitation from the, the the diocese from the Archdiocese of Westminster 
um, for LGBT Catholics to come and be part of a parish yeah. and we host them here so we've been asked to do this by the diocese and we've been doing it now for, for eight years and it goes very well so LGBT Catholics um, can feel that they are welcome here um, and that they're part of, of the community. Um, we also have a programme here called Landings, which is for those who've been away from the Catholic faith and who are coming back. And returning. Yeah, okay. And returning. Yeah. And um, you're finding this quite a few, uh, Father? We are. Yeah, there's a steady trickle. There yeah, is at the moment. I think everybody trickle. needs religion at the moment. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how many tragedies in the world, and particularly a pandemic, which yeah. would see how people return yeah. to faith, yeah. including myself. And we're finding that, actually. We're yeah. seeing that. that there Comfort. Are people, you know, people are um, drifting away numbers are going down all mm -hmm. over but we're also finding that people are not the balance or, yeah through the live stream as well um you know through broadcast of course and it's but the way of the future isn't it mass and funerals i know that it is in ireland mostly all the funerals are online now and i know that thousands of people yeah. watch them yeah. yeah but speaking of which the community also this really struck me ladies and gents when i first walked in the door look at this so this depicts, I'll let Father talk about it, but just to let you know, this depicts a homeless Jesus. So this is, this is um, a sculpture by a Canadian called Tim Schmaltz, who's done a lot of work um, with the Roman Catholic Church. Um, Pope Francis commissions him to do various works. Oh, lovely. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's a shocking sculpture. It is of Jesus um, on a park bench, um, and you can just see all the that wounds. is visible is, is his feet. Yeah, the wounds and the feet, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's an amazing piece. It's, just, it's, it's provocative. It, it's, it makes you... It's so it reminds, you know, if you find that people come and they, and they, they stop in front of, of this and they, um, they leave flowers, they, uh, they, they take a moment to sit on the bench beside Jesus. Wow. Um, and and there's, there's, there's really a sense of connecting there that it is shocking. And sometimes people don't realise who it is and then they see the wounds and they, they make the connection or they read what we They read the, uh, the script it. on the sign. Yeah. It, yeah, it's funny because so many people ignore the homeless, but when you see something like that, you just really kind of professes your faith and thinks, well, you can't. I mean, this is yeah. homeless Jesus, yeah. you know? And yeah. how we are there to protect the homeless, essentially. It's a reminder that Jesus is, yeah, Jesus was homeless himself. Himself, absolutely, um, Father, yeah. He was a refugee himself. Um, of course. To, to flee with Mary and Joseph um, into Egypt. Um, and um, and it reminds us stable. that we, yeah. you know, we could be in that same position, you know. Very easily. And the people we meet in our homeless service are people who just had bad luck, especially during the pandemic. You know, sure. lost jobs, lost relationships, mm -hmm. and end up homeless, you know. So Jesus is, is, um, is, is with us. He's, um, he's, one, he's one of us as, as the weakest in society. Yeah. And, and you just put a shot there of, um, of Our Lady of Mary. And um, th this originally, Homeless Jesus, there was a, um, th there was a, a desire to have, as in many cities around the world, to have this sculpture outside. Um, now that wasn't possible. It, mm -hmm. it hit on difficulties mm -hmm. um, with um, with another central London church that was hoping to have this done, and that's why then we put in for this and we received it. Um, uh, the fact that it's inside the church speaks to me of of um, of sanctuary and the sanctuary that we give to the homeless and that you welcome them in. Yeah. Absolutely, I think it's a great yeah. point. Yeah, and and with Jesus' mother is actually is actually looking over Jesus in his in his destitution and um, and showing her Stunning care peace. and also she has her hand out showing us who who this Jesus who her son really is that's amazing the invitation is. and she's pointing them with her other her other hand she's pointing to her sorrow in her heart with the swords in her heart so it, it kind of really, with Mary there as well, overlooking homeless Jesus, 
just reminds us who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. So I'm really glad that so many people stop here. It's amazing. Effect. And in fact, just to um, reiterate that point, the first time I came in here, Father, and it's a lovely story, I met a homeless chap in here. Yeah. And yeah. I was chatting yeah. to him for ages, and yeah. he said that this place gives him some bit of peace of mind. He'd had a very tragic life, and he spoke kind of immensely about his life. It all happened very quickly. But he said if he didn't have here, he wouldn't be alive today. So yeah, the sanctuary yeah. does work, Good. Father, yeah. really does. Yeah. So let's just have a look at the altar here. This is Augustus Pugin, yeah. which you're familiar with, folks, from the tours of London, St. Mary's Cathedral and the Houses of Parliament, of course, and so many other churches. But look how stunning and the detail, how decorative. It really is. I mean, it's magnificent. And I believe the two mosaics at the back are um, commemorating the Annunciation and the Coronation of Mary. That's is correct. that correct? Yes, yeah. that's right. And um, Sal Salvietto, was it? I think I, so, yes. I think it was Salvietto. But it's stunning, the detail. I it mean, really is. it screams uh, a Pugin. I mean, the man was just a perfectionist. The, the altar at, at the back has just been restored a few years ago. That okay. is the Pugin altar. Okay. Um, and obviously that's not used for the celebration of Mass now. Okay. Because the, because the altar in the, that is the altar in the middle. Yes, of course. Altar, which is in a new middle. altar, okay. which was consecrated in June 2019. And we, we used marble from a quarry in Italy oh, um, Italian for marble. that. And it was, yeah, really, really beautiful. See the marble, ladies and gents. So kind of like Westminster Cathedral where we were, where we saw all the different types of marble there as yeah. well. That's right. yeah. There was interesting about the one in Westminster Cathedral as well. They said the bishop and the marble, that the, he insisted that this particular marble was used so it wouldn't be cracked. Yeah. Because when the um, dissolution of the, the Catholic churches during the Henry VIII reign, yeah. they used to demolish the, uh, well, they used to uh, yeah. attack yeah. the altars. So yes, you wanted exactly. something that couldn't be exactly. broken. Yes. But now how beautiful, yes. you guys. I mean, just a little hidden secret here in Mayfair. Well, not a secret anymore now, because you'll come visit, folks. And Our and Lady of Farm Street. Oh, wow. So this it's is who the church is. That is stunning with colour in it, ladies and gents. You don't normally see so much colour, do no. you, in a statue of Our yeah, Lady? That's right. I mean, it is very, you know, Gothic, Victorian. Beautiful. The bringing all those colours out, the blues and the reds and the golds. Well, now yeah. it truly is a hidden gem. I just definitely want to see the Last Supper over here, though, if you don't mind, yeah. Father. And shall we, shall we have a quick visit to the Sacred Heart Altar on the way? Very Absolutely. I, you yeah. are my mentor here. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. So oh, the wow. The church goes back to the 1840s, as I was saying. But the Jesuits, of course, go right back to, as you mentioned, Henry VIII and the Reformation. And they go right back to the 1540s and in England, um, really to the first martyr for the Catholic faith, um, uh, who was a celebrity, a real celebrity at the time, Sir Edmund Campion, who was a Jesuit, who was martyred in 1581, oh, wow. not far from here at the Gallows Tiger. Oh, he was. So he yeah. was one of the Catholic martyrs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then we just did a video for there on the Tyburn Covent. Oh, good, yeah. And also, so the customers yeah. will be familiar with the 305 yes. Catholic martyrs. A huge number of them were Jesuits. Amazing. Yeah. They were all Jesuits Not too. All them, Not all of them, but, but quite a few, many, weren't there? Very many. Of them. That's amazing. So great so, that so we have our connection have, there, folks. Yes, and here we have uh, the 17th century um, represented because we have there, on the right, we have kneeling St. Margaret Mary. Mm -hmm. we've, got, obviously, we've got Jesus in the Sacred Heart, and then we've got Mary and Joseph. We've got St. Patrick there. We've got St. Ignatius of Loyola, the founder of the Jesuits. That's right. That. But we've also got, a kneeling there, um, next to Ignatius is Father Claude La Colombière, St. Claude La Colombière, who was a French Jesuit who um, was the spiritual director to St. Margaret Mary in France, in um, paris le Monial in Burgundy and received the visions of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Now that's a Catholic oh, devotion wow. which expresses um, Jesus' love for us in his, through his, his heart. And it was very important in spirituality in the 17th and 18th centuries um, in Catholicism. But, but Claude was here, which in London. So Claude was the, um, so at the time when the, um, uh, when uh, 
the restoration of the of the monarchy was was just was was just about to happen. If thinking back to the reign of Charles II, the Charles, the Merry Monarch folks, you're familiar with him, yes. Yeah. So between 1675 and 1678, um, Father Claude was brought over, perhaps because he didn't trust the English Jesuits because they were. Su suspected because of the gunpowder plot of the Oh yes of course century. and Guy Fawkes yeah, yeah. Um, and being involved in that although they weren't you know and then uh, he was sent over to be the the chaplain at the court so he was based at St James's Palace which is just down the road from here yes so not very far from Palm um, Farm Street yeah mm -hmm. um, just on Palm Mall. and um, and he was the chaplain to Mary of Modena who was the um, the, 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 the wife the, um, of the, the future queen of, um, of the, the, the heir to the throne at the time, the Catholic who became James II. That's right. So Who had to flee, wasn't it? Yeah, exactly, exactly, that time. exactly, exactly mm -hmm. ten years later in the next decade. So Claude was here and he was caught up in anti-Catholic persecution and suspicion at the time. There was a plot which was, um, which was fabricated. Um, uh, As they so often were. Was involved in... Um, implicated in the in uh, attempt to assassinate the king to assassinate Charles II and Claude ended up being uh, being put in prison and then and, and then he 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 was exiled he he was um, forced to, to flee um, there were six other Jesuits though um, who were ministering because there weren't any Catholic churches they were around in the area all around St Giles and Holborn and Victoria and uh, and they ended up um, getting getting uh, martyred, hung, drawn, and quartered at Tyburn, and then they were buried at St Giles in the Fields Anglican Church. And oh. if you go there, you will see a plaque which commemorates them, along with St Oliver Plunkett, Archbishop of Armagh. That's right. Who, and he arrived in his vestibules on the day, didn't he? Yeah. But that was all a fabrication as well, Father, wasn't it? it, was it, too? it was so they were all they were all um, executed. Um, being because they were implicated in this plot in high treason. It's called the Titus Oates plot. It was oh, um, a guy a called Titus name. Oates okay. who was a spy who went over to um, the continent and um, and was training to be a Roman Catholic priest and got to know all of the information about what was going on and okay. then he fabricated it. And so these men met their end. Now, the, one of the, the, there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a good story about this in the end because that's going back to the 17th century. So now, in today's age, we have wonderful connections, obviously, with the Church of England and with the mm. civic authorities here. Yes, a different ballgame so, now. Yeah. And so, if you go to St Giles in the Fields on this tour, then you will see this plaque, which was only, um, which, which is, which was only dedicated. Um, three years ago. Oh wow! Yeah. It took that length yeah. of time. And, wow! Um, what the Church of England really wanted to um, wanted to emphasise was that this was an opportunity for reconciliation, and we had a wonderful ceremony, um, which which marked the six men and how this was a bloody time in history when oh my God. when when you know both sides were guilty of yes, um, of course, you know, of course, of persecution on and, either sides. Yeah. 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 So a bit of our past, which goes before. This when the this was formation. when this was you know this was countryside and um, when there would have been very little on this site except the punch bowl pub um, and one or two houses you know but there were Jesuits around here and this is part of our heritage as well yes so this is what we we inherit oh my God it's spectacular and amazing to think that these martyrs are commemorated in so many different churches yeah. as well yeah. you know we did the uh, we spoke about um, old Saint Th Southworth. Oh, That's yes. also, I mean, it's an in amazing story in Westminster well, Cathedral. Have, yeah, I mean, and he would have worked alongside a Jesuit called Henry Morse. That's right. So they, were, they were both, so Southworth was in um, Victoria, and, um, and That's Henry right. Morse would have been ministering to plague victims in St Giles and Holborn. Oh, so yeah. the connection was in there the, between in, them in the in same the era. In the 17th century. Yeah. Oh my God, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. You see the connections we can make. Ladies and gents, look at this. Father, the artist, is he your resident artist again? So this is our resident artist, again. Andrew White. The and same man who did the Blessed Virgin. Exactly. And <gasps> He's gifted. Rather like Caravaggio, although Andrew will say that he, he doesn't copy Caravaggio, he's just himself. 
he places himself in the painting. Oh, so he's wonderful. There. He's there. At just... the top, is that? Oh, no. No, no. That's no. Judas, that I'm assuming. Judas Iscariot. Oh, the Judas. But, okay, look um, at Judas. You'll see a- Andrew White himself is just to the Jesus left. So is he the side? Is that him here? So if you look just, um, so as you're looking at it, at yes. this, to, to, the, to the right. Okay. This is him here. Uh, in front of Jesus. Oh, in the red robe. In the red robe. Oh, so this is the artist here, folks, in the red robe here, just in front of Jesus. So in the reverse for you, but obviously Jesus is there in the white robe. This is the actual artist in red. That is spectacular. It almost makes them look like they're modern men, doesn't it? It's so they're all from. So Andrew, as I said, he's um, he's a very, a very faith-filled um, Anglican painter. Um, who um, uh, really wants to um, wants to bring his his um, his work to um, to a church setting, and he would have in, in the village where he, he lives in Lincolnshire, he got a group of men together from the village, oh, and so fantastic. so these are are real people. These are based on modern yeah. men, then. And okay. That's often what people say um, that when they come here and they see the Last Supper, and they spend time in front of the painting and pray here. And they often say, uh, "I can see myself in the painting, or I recognise that that face because yes. it's an English face, you know. Of course, it's a face it is. which is um, well. Which it makes we it makes the, the last sem- supper yeah. more more kind of uh, identifiable to us yeah. as people, isn't yeah. it? When it's your own nationality. Yeah. But this is quite eerie, Father. On top, Judas Iscariot on top is very it's very eerie, isn't it? It really is, and the betrayal that happened, of course, that evening. It's like. Oh my God, it's, um, I loved this when I saw it. I think the guy is exceptionally talented. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name again? Andrew White. Andrew White, ladies and gents. So exceptionally talented Anglican painter. And um, we should check out his stuff. And if he has a website, etc. definitely. Yes, he has. Oh, yeah. wow. And the Stations of the Cross, ladies and gents. <coughs> Which has just been restored. Yeah. which have also just been restored. So I'm just going to give you one little last glimpse of the church from this angle. Okay. And more than anything, this is located right in the heart of May- Mayfair, ladies and gents. It's called the Farm Street Church. Father Dominic here has been of absolute amazing help. And thank you sincerely, thank Father you. Dominic. You've been amazing. So please don't forget this lovely hidden gem, ladies and gents. We'll put all the details about the church on the, um, the video. So as ever, thank you again, Father Dominic, and thanks for joining us, folks. Yeah.